Hi students, this is Dr. Z, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to get started on the Live Finder project. As mentioned in the syllabus, this class utilizes self-directed learning. This project will allow you to direct much of your own learning by visiting websites you're interested in and thinking critically about how you could use those websites in your classroom. When you get to student teaching, your Live Binder will be a wonderful repository of resources for you to refer to. You could also include a link to your binder on your resume and talk about it with principals during job interviews. When you have your own classroom, you can continue to use resources from your binder. Now that you know why this is an important project, let's get started. You might find it helpful to complete each of these steps as you watch the video. First, click where it says click here and complete steps 1 through 8. This opens the LiveBinder Google Doc with the directions for the LiveBinder project. Start with step one. First, make sure that you're logged into Gmail. If not, simply open a new tab and log in to Gmail. Then come back to this Google Doc. Now click File, make a copy. Rename it with your last name first initial. For this example, I will pretend to be a student named Justin Timberlake. So I removed copy of and replaced that with Timberlake J, keeping LiveBinder key assessment. Save this to your um, 30, 40, or 55 fold. 40 folder and then click OK. Now close that old window. We want to work on the copy that has your name on it. We've completed step one. Now let's go to step two. You will click here on the hyperlink and then click here for this to open in a new tab. Oops, I'm signed in so let me log out so that you can see here we go. Here's the video that you would play. I want you to watch that video. It's only about a minute long and then you'll come back to the Google Doc. Step three is to create a free account. <clears throat> so from the home page you would click on sign up. I would recommend that you sign up with Google. Um, I'm going to log in however because I already have my login. Now let's go over step four. Once you're logged into Live Binders, you're going to click New Binder. Name your binder with your last name, first initial, and then the words Technology Toolkit. In description, enter either EDUC 3040 or 5540, depending on your, your course number. Change Personal to Education, change Private to Public, and then click on Create New Binder. Now you have a brand new empty binder. Let's do some housekeeping here and check out some of the features in settings. Click settings, access, public, copy, disabled, and save. X off of this window. You are also welcome to change the colors, layout, or add a front cover to your binder if you wish. Those are optional. X off of these windows. Now let me show you how to set up the tabs for the NTASC standards. LiveFinder starts you off with three tabs. Click on each one and name them NTASC 3, NTASC 4, and then you would name this one NTASC 5 obviously, but now you've run out of tabs. To add more, simply click on tab and you can continue to add them. If a tab appears in the wrong spot, let's say you wanted this tab to appear to the right, you would simply click that triangle and then click move to the right or move to the left, whichever you prefer. If you accidentally add too many tabs, click that triangle and then click delete this tab. Now, if you would like to add further descriptions to the tabs that you create, you can simply go to the LiveBinder Directions Google Doc scroll down and find the descriptors for each of the NTASC standards. Now I have the NTASC standards memorized, but you may not have those memorized yet. You may not know them by heart and that's completely okay. Um, and what I would recommend doing to help you learn those NTASC standards by heart is to include those keywords that follow the standard number so that you can get to know them a little bit better and start thinking about which websites would go under uh, which standard. So to this tab, I'm simply going to add that descriptor. So now when I find resources that will help me um, with my learning environments, I know to put those under NTESS standard three and so on. That is not required, it is completely optional. Now let me show you how to add descriptions to the tabs. I've clicked on in task standard three. Now I'm going to click on content, text, 
and you can choose whether to have text and an image or just text. I just want text. I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to X off of this window now. I will click on where it says click here to edit and I'm going to add the text of that standard. So to get the standard, I'm going to scroll back up on the Google Doc and open this link where I've typed up the wording for each of the standards. I'll paste that in and then every so often you will want to click save. LifeBinders does have an autosave feature and it works well about 99% of the time, but there you can see it's auto-saving. You never just want to rely on that. Always go back every so often and click this save button to ensure that you don't lose any information. Before we continue, let's go back to the Google Doc with the directions and look at step five where I have created a shell live binder. There's some minimal content that I want to show you so you can see what your live binder will look like as it starts to take shape. You can see I have chosen to include a cover image and I have some directions about how you could upload your own self-created cover art if you wish. Again, totally optional. You can see I've changed up the default colors. I have a welcome page and an about me page. Those are completely optional. Um, I wrote this one from the perspective of myself as an undergraduate student. So when I was in your shoes, and I was going to school to get my teaching license, um, this is something that I could have included in my live binder. Again, the welcome page, the about me page are completely optional, they're not necessary, but you might think that they are helpful, especially as you go on the job hunt and principals are perhaps opening up your live binder and getting to know you a little bit better. But let's go over to NTSC standard three, and you can see here I have included three resources. Um, remember, if you're an undergraduate student, the minimum requirement is three resources. Graduate students, it's six resources. I'm going to click on the first resource, and you can see here I have my two paragraphs. And there is an image over here of this website, and if I were to click on the link, that website would open up. Here's Google Classroom. You can see this website does not allow their content to be previewed. It even says here the owner of this website has a policy that this site can only be viewed in its own window. And so when I click here, I can get logged into my Google Classroom. And for the last one, Class Dojo, um, they're much like Google Classroom. They do not allow their content to be previewed, but instead of, of putting a, a message up about them having a policy against allowing their content to be previewed, it just says um, Class Dojo refused to connect. So if you see this image over here, it's okay. Yes, it looks kind of sad. But it is okay because when you click on that link, it will open up in a new window. And there are just a handful of websites that are like that. They just simply don't allow their content to be previewed on Live Binders. All right, now that you have the skeleton of your Live Binder, you've seen an example of, of what it is that I'm looking for. I want to show you how to add those sub tabs. Um, so how did I add KidRex and Google Classroom and Class Dojo? Let me show you here. I'm going to click on in task standard three, and then I'm going to click sub tab. And that puts um, a new tab here for me, just like you could see um, here was KidRex. That could easily be KidRex right there. Um, but let me show you another document that is going to be very, very helpful to you. I've tried to take some of the guesswork out of this assignment by giving you a Live Binder links list. So example resources for each standard are given in my Live Binder links list. But you could also use resources that are not listed there. So let's open up that document so you can see what it looks like. For each of the in-task standards, I have given you some sample websites to choose from. So you could choose um, three of these or find your own if you're an undergraduate student. Um, if you're a graduate student, then um, you would need to choose six of these to include in your live finder. So let's say that I'm particularly interested in this website Padlet. And so what I would do is take a look at it. I would read over the information here. Um, I might visit some of these links. I could also open up a new window. I could go to YouTube 
and search for Padlet. Um, I might filter this to find videos that were made this year so that I know the information I'm getting is current. Here we go. I could watch this Padlet tutorial um, from Tube Techie, or I could find one of these other tutorials from another user to learn more about Padlet. And let's say that I've decided I want to include Padlet in my binder. So here's what I would do. I would grab this URL. I'm going to copy it. And then um, I'm going to type Padlet here. Paste that link where it says enter a URL and then click insert. So that automatically puts the website here. But as you noticed in my example, I had some text over here along with the website. So now I'm going to click on content because I want to change the way the content looks. And I'm going to choose text media. I could also choose media text. Um, but I like the text on the left side and the, and the website on the right. And here is where I could add in my text. So you might be wondering, what am I supposed to write about this website? Well, if you go back to our directions, I have that information here. You will include a rationale for each resource made up of two paragraphs. The first paragraph is a summary paragraph. The second paragraph is an application paragraph. A paragraph will be considered a minimum of four sentences for this project, but you're welcome to write more than that. So in your first paragraph, you will summarize what the website does. And in the second paragraph, you will give at least one specific example of how you would use that website in your classroom. So going back to an example that I already did, I'll click on KidRex. You can see here I summarize what KidRex is. And then in this paragraph, I give an example of how I would use it in my classroom. And so that's what you're going to be doing with each of your resources. Um, again, to add another resource here, let's say that you go back to this list and you read all about Genius Hour and you want to include that in your Google Doc. You will again click where it says um, in task standard three and then click sub tab. You give it that name. Paste in the URL, click insert. And then again, go to content, text media, and it gives you that room to write your two paragraphs there. And again, remember every so often click on save. Now, once you've chosen your resources for NTAST Standard 3, you would go back to the Schoology page. All you did was begin that live binder assignment. You just did that. Everybody also has a discussion board assignment. Now, depending on which section of the class you're in, your discussion board assignment may look different from this. Um, so if you're watching this video and you're saying to yourself, hmm, that does not look like the discussion board for my class, then it's just because you're in a different section of the class. There's a hybrid section, and then there's a section where assignments are completely online. So if you're in a different section watching this tutorial video, no worries. But um, everyone does have a discussion board assignment that goes along with um, the live binder work. I also want to go back to Live Binders and mention that um, as you are working on this, when you're finished with a session, you will want to click on Log Out. And then when you're ready to come back, let's say another day, you just simply log back in and you land on your dashboard. And so to get back into editing your book where you just left off, you hover over it and then you click on Edit. If you simply click on Open, that opens as um, like a presentation. See how the formatting is different? And you're not able to edit anything. So from your dashboard, you hover over your binder and click edit. Um, if at any time you need to share your binder with someone, um, for example, that is one of the requirements on the discussion board is that you be able to share this. You will click the word share and copy and paste this URL into that discussion board. Now you know how to get started with module two. All right, this concludes the tutorial on how to get started with the LiveBinder project. 
I'm sure you're thinking, wow, this is a lot of work, but I do hope you will find it worthwhile and be able to use your binder in student teaching, during job interviews, and even in your own classroom, and I hope that you'll have fun with it.